Hey, today we will draw and coloring a peach using mesh tool and through this lesson we will learn the most important methods of creating main lines to suit the terrain of the structure as is the case in designing or drawing any 3D model element. At the beginning of creating the structure, we start with a simple square and convert it to a mesh tool gradient by assigning two to each to obtain four equal cells. At this stage we focus mainly on extending the anchors that will show the details of the entire shape from start to finish, and it depends on the mesh fitting perfectly to the shape of the peach piece. An important note when building the mesh, you must imagine the beginning and end of the path, such as using the linear or radial gradient tool, depending on the area we are working on. These practical examples will help you understand and control the wonderful techniques of Adobe Illustrator based on correct scientific foundations, and they will be an introduction to 3D programs. With practice, we will discover where to place the main points and direct the paths to obtain curves that are exactly like a sketch drawing. This is where the success of coloring with the mesh tool is determined. We add cells or paths only when necessary while fitting the shape's borders, because the tangling and complexity of the lines is undesirable at the beginning of work. When we add this particular path, we notice that it fits perfectly with the peach peel, and now we will expand it from the other side to become similar to the sketch. This is what I was saying a little while ago. When building the mesh correctly, we have color cells in exactly the right place. The curvature of this path at the bottom of the peach peel is what will show its edges, as shown in the example to the side. When you pay attention to the grid at the beginning of the work, this will be reflected in the coloring later. So you must constantly practice this stage because it is the basis for every successful work through this technique. Some people think that coloring is just choosing random colors of course not. Coloring is a cumulative building process that begins with the basics until the end of the painting. Therefore, in this lesson we will observe a sequence of coloring stages in order to obtain the final result. At this stage, we have the main network complete and we start coloring and showing the details step by step. Now we have two virtual light sources that you should always have in your mind while coloring. One is from the right side and the other is from behind. We will rely on them to color the shadow areas. Adding close lines indicates a strong concentration of color in that area, such as a strong highlight or separating one area from another. When selecting colors, first select the anchor with the direct selection tool, then choose the eyedropper tool. You can use shortcuts to do this. We usually start with a medium color and when focusing on the details, we choose dark or bright shades depending on the area. You can get the sketch and color scale included in this video through the download link in the description box. The following steps show the surface details and then increase the lines to cover a color area that crosses the required terrain. Selecting colors of the same or lighter shade can be done by using the eyedropper and repeated clicks on the same surface instead of choosing them from the color ruler.
Now we create the raised relief by adding the appropriate color and moving the point up or down. As mentioned earlier, aligning the lines together highlights the details. The handles play a major role in spreading the color gradient from the beginning to the end of the corresponding point. It gets easier with repetition, and coloring begins with defining the outline of each point we add or move. The shortcut keys for the mesh tool and the eyedropper are often used to accomplish tasks. For the mesh tool, press the letter U. For the eyedropper tool, press the letter I. For direct selection, press the letter A or Shift plus A. We'll now speed up the coloring process a bit. as the steps are exactly the same as those I explained earlier. The tools are the same, with the color changing according to the color ruler. Coloring also requires a little mental imagination. Or we can use the direct section tool by clicking outside the element and dragging inside to select a number of points for coloring. Also, to create a rough surface, we always use moving the points horizontally or vertically, depending on the desired effect. Imagine a virtual spotlight focused on one side to break up the overall shadows with the backlight refractions. Here we create a light colored highlight edge to give a realistic finish to the corset and feel the wet texture of the peach. While coloring, we can select one or more points or use a range of points using the lasso tool, especially for large areas. Use the wrinkle tool with a single click to create subdots that are not paintable but play a big role in revealing rough surfaces or a textured effect to give the color a blend between soft painting and brush strokes. These stages focus entirely on highlighting strong details, such as the raised bumps and side edges of the peach section. More color contrast and point movement make the element more 3D. Accuracy here is crucial to the success of the shape and its realism. We can select one or more points or use a range of points using the lasso tool, especially for large areas. Use the wrinkle tool with a single click to create subdots that are not paintable but play a big role in revealing rough surfaces or a textured effect to give the color a blend between soft painting and brush strokes.
These stages focus entirely on highlighting strong details, such as the raised bumps and side edges of the peach section. More color contrast and point movement make the element more 3D. Use the wrinkle tool with different sizes to create small, spaced subdots that create rough surfaces or a fine texture effect, especially when you click this tool multiple times. Important note, resizing any element makes the details appear more powerful. Shadows play a major role in the final results of the details, so we must focus on them after drawing the basic lines. In fact, the colors appear in layers, sequentially throughout each stage until the end. Resizing any element makes the details appear more powerful. I expect the results to be good so far. In this step, we'll draw and color the peach leaf as shown in the sketch image to complement the design and add additional aesthetics. I used an easy method to draw a peach leaf, with impressive and quick results. Step 1, create a circle and delete half of it by deleting one of the side nodes. Step 2, extend the circle's top upwards to form a leaf shape. Step 3, use the mesh tool directly from the center to create a symmetrical area. Step 4, use a light green color to represent subtle lighting and move the nodes to the edges to increase focus. Create another copy and position it in the opposite direction to form the entire leaf. I think it's easy and cute. I've prepared this texture previously so we can redraw it, and I'll explain the method in a simplified manner. First, we make the image transparent so we can see the peach leaf. It's best to lock this image so it doesn't move while drawing. We select a dark green color and use the brush tool to draw over the lines, or you can draw these lines in any way you like. The method is very simple. Now delete the source image and we've obtained the peach leaf texture. We choose the line style from the stroke menu to make the lines completely irregular, in addition to changing the line thickness as desired. Group all of them, 
select the dark blending mode with 70% transparency and create another copy for the opposite side. We can add a color effect below the leaf to give us a sense of the beginning of its main branch. Now, we'll balance it as it is in the original drawing of the project. We'll create another copy and scale it down a bit. Recolor can be used to slightly correct brightness or contrast in corrections on certain areas the final stage. To compare with the previous example, we zoomed out for a preview. All the details are correct, and in our current example, the results were better and were carefully adjusted, such as color saturation and contrast, with a greater focus on details. We always make some final touches after completing a design to make it even better. Now that we've completed the task, we'll add value to the design to make it more attractive by also adding a suitable background color using the mesh tool and adding simple effects. Create a shadow suitable for the shape using the mesh tool. Create a white circle, select a darker color from this area, and move the handle to the left to focus the shadow on the background. Choose the multiplay blending mode to fade the white color and show only the shadow's strength. Thanks for watching and more interesting and useful lessons coming soon.